Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Digital asset hosting and co-location service provider Terraco is building a 17,500 square meter data center in Gauteng to serve the demand for data center and hosting services throughout Southern Africa. Skalk Berger tells us more. Vendor neutral data center company Terraco is building a large new data center next to its existing data center in Isando, Gauteng. This is a result of sustained and growing demand for hosting and cloud services from across Africa, and the company forecasts further sustained growth and demand. Terraco Data Environment's Head of Operations, Gijs Geiser, explains the reasons for a new data center. This data center is Joba 1 West, and this one will, the white space will be around 5,000 squares. The entire building will be around 17,500 squares, which compensates and allows for energy centers, UPS generators, and some office space, but ultimately 5,000 squares dedicated to data center space. Behind me is what we call Joburg East. This is our existing data center. It consists of around 4,000 squares of data center space and plant space. And as a result of the growth and demand, client demand, it was necessitated itself to build another data center. Hence the fact that we've acquired this piece of land and we're now in construction and building Africa's largest data center. Because the temperature in Gauteng specifically drops below 20 degrees every night of the year, we found that to get efficiencies and a good PoE, it would be advisable to use something called uh, dynamic free cooling or DFC. And we've designed this entire building or the data center to be able to accommodate dynamic free cooling, which is, um, allows us to use the outside ambient during times when it's below 20 degrees to bring about efficiencies. Terraco project manager Derek Miller details some of the technical construction challenges encountered and the rapid pace of construction of the project which broke ground in October in the past year and will be completed by December this year. We started in October with the excavations and the demolishing of the old building. Uh, currently we are standing on about 800 tons of steel that we've used in the building currently. And then secondly, it's about 2,200 cubes of, of cement. Uh, another big big milestone of what, that we achieved on site is the, the 320 cubes that we poured in uh, one day, which was quite a challenge for the guys on site. And then uh, general challenges that we have on site is because the site is so big, uh, storage space is a big issue, so for the guys to achieve a 320 cubes a day is, is quite an achievement. Then something exclusive for the project is the power upgrade, where we are busy doing the whole power upgrade project from a substation here in Asando to the current, current uh, site. Uh, we're currently 40% and our timing needs to be spot on to get those to this building completion and that power here at the same time. We are fast tracking the construction project, uh, so that's a challenge in itself. And then over and above the, the physical building that we need to do is, client needs to go live in the data center 9th of December. That includes our power fit out, that's our two generators, A and B, our UPSs, our cooling in the data centers, uh, the flooring, it's a, it's a clean box for the client to switch on cabinet. So that's a major challenge for us. The excavation for the lower basement is, is eight and a half meters. Uh, because of the soil stability, we had to make a decision to start piling. Uh, our piles vary in depth because of the rock structure underneath. Uh, anything between seven and a half and three meters. And some places we had to build bases because we couldn't drill through the rock. So excavation wise, eight and a half. And then it's two basements. And then we have the four stories at the top of the ground up to third. Other news making headlines this week. Sanrail rubbishes Asa's claim that GPIF was 321% overpriced and questions its motives. And Google commits to training 1 million people in Africa in 12 months. The conclusions reached in Asa's recent position paper only serve the objective of Asa, namely to discredit Sanrail and the road agency's integrity, says Sanrail spokesperson Bruce Simona. The report insinuates some serious allegations against Sanrail. It attacks our integrity and professional conduct, Alpha makes unsubstantiated allegations of collusion, corruption, etc., based on the false finding of this report. The conclusion of this report only serves the objective of Alta, namely to discredit Sunral and Sunral's integrity. 
Google, in partnership with Liberty Africa, has committed to upgrading the digital skills of some 1 million people across Africa over the next 12 months by expanding its Digify Digital Training Initiative onto a free of charge online training platform. We will be committing to training a million people across Africa in the next 12 months, equipping them with the kind of digital skills that will enable them to manage their own online profiles, develop their professional personas, potentially start small businesses, and accelerate the kind of economic growth that we need to see across, across not just South Africa, of course, but across the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. That's Kruma Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.